Today we're looking at the for each loop. For loops can be pretty long. There are like three statements just inside the parentheses. So for each loops are pretty much truncated versions of that. They're shorter and easier to read. I'm gonna show you how to use for each loops in your programs. And if you follow along, you won't have any trouble at all. Hey, what's up? I'm Alex, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I make a Java video on this channel every single week for you. So if you might be interested in that, then please consider subscribing. We're in Eclipse. We're just gonna go to File, New, Java Project, just like every video. We'll call it for each, hit finish, and then inside that source folder, we're just gonna throw a class in there. Let's call it like, happy fun time. Hit this public state void main and finish. So a regular for loop, looks like this. You have the keyword for, you have an integer, which is usually i for some reason. You have when you want your loop to stop, so some number or the length of something, and then you increment it each time. And if we print this out, you'd get something like this. You get zero, one, two, three, four. Because when we hit the green run button, we go into the main method, we see the keyword for, we set an integer i equal to zero, we check if zero is less than five, which it is, so we run the code inside, and we print out zero. So we get zero here. When we hit the end, we increment i by one, i is now one, which is less than five, so we print one, all the way up until four. Now we increment four, i is now five, five is not less than five, so we exit. And that's why we stop at four. Now this is a lot. There's a lot to keep track of, there's a lot going on. Sometimes you just don't wanna write a full for loop all the time. So that's why they created the for each loop, which has this syntax, for, and then something something with this colon in between. And it basically says, for each one of these, inside one of these, then do this. So let's do an example of using that for each loop with an array, just to illustrate the idea a little more clearly. So say we have an array of strings, and we'll say cars, and we'll throw some cars inside of here. We've got the BMW M2, We've got the Veloster N, and we've got GTI. Cool. These are all cars I really want, by the way. If we were using a regular for loop, it would look something like this. You'd start at zero, and you'd go to the length of the array, and you'd print out the value at that index, and it would look like something like this. But I mean, look at this. There's so many words, so many letters. Let's use a for each loop instead. Like before, we've got the keyword for, it's in parentheses. We're gonna say for each string inside of here, since this is an array of strings, we wanna do one element at a time. So for each string car, inside of cars, print out car. It's as simple as that. By the way, what I just did there was I typed sys out and then control space to finish it. That's a just a quick way to type the print statement. But so how this for each loop works is that instead of making an integer i and then using that i throughout the loop to access elements, what it does is we just create the element itself each time we see a new one. So I'll just run through it because I really enjoy walking through code line by line and that seems to help a lot of people out there. So when we click run, we jump into the main method and the first thing we see is this string square brackets, which is how you create an array. It looks like this array of strings is called cars and the cars inside are BMW M2, Veloster N, and GTI. Cool, so now we have the cars array. The next thing we do is we see a for loop. We declare a string car, which is set to nothing right now, it's null. And each time we go through cars, the cars array, we'll create a new car. So we jump inside of the curly braces, we look at the first car in cars, 
So the first string inside of this string array is BMW M2. So now car is equal to BMW M2. So now when we print out car, we print out BMW M2. And so that's what happens here. Next, we jump back to the top. The for each loop auto increments to the next value. So now car is Veloster N because it knows that this is an array and it infers that that's what we want to do, go one at a time. Now car is Veloster N, so we print out Veloster N. Now car is GTI, so we print out GTI. And now it sees that the length of the array is no longer, it's done. We hit three, there's nothing more to go. So since we can't set car to anything, we just jump out of the loop and that's it. That's what this program does. This works for all types of arrays. So if we had a char array and these were all characters like A, B, C, it would work the exact same way. You just change this variable to char and it works like that. Another way you can use for each loops in Java are with iterators. So an iterator is just an object, just like any other object. It has its own methods and things that it can do, but an iterator helps with going through things one by one. And it's returned by a lot of common objects you may use, which is why it comes up using iterators. It works the same with array lists. So let's do one with an array list. Let's say numbers equals new array list. Let's hover over it and import that ArrayList into our program. And with ArrayList, it's kind of weird. You have to use alligator brackets to say what type. We said all the values inside are going to be strings in that string array. Well, we have to do the same thing with ArrayList. But since it's an object, we got to do it this way. And these are going to be integer. The reason that we're doing a capital integer instead of int is because since this is an object, it has to use the object version. Anyways, let's add some numbers. Um, add three, seven, and two. And let's use a for each loop to go through those. So for each, these are integers for each int a inside of numbers, then we can print out A. And look how much cleaner that is than creating a whole for loop. The equivalent would be print I equals zero and I is less than the length of the array list, size increment by one each time, print out print out the value of the index i. That would do the exact same thing. But just look how much cleaner this one is and easier to read. So that's basically for each loops in Java. I thought I'd share this with you because I've been doing for loops like the long way for a long time, but I just started using for each loops and they help me program a lot quicker, a lot cleaner, and it's just a good thing to know. I hope this was helpful. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.